Yo, 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 this is Afro, a.k.a. All Flows Reach Out, and you're listening to Built For This Network. Yes, sir. Home the building, they pay. Wow. television and doing it on the radio what we did was to help our generation realize they got to get out there and get busy because it wasn't going to be televised we got respect for young rappers and the way they freeway up but if you're going to be teaching folks things be sure you know what you're saying older folks in our neighborhood got plenty of know-how and remember if it wasn't for them we wouldn't be out there now and i ain't coming at you with no disrespect all i'm saying is that you damn well got to be correct Because if you're gonna be speaking for a whole generation and you know enough to try and handle their education, be sure you know the real deal about past situations and ain't just repeating what you heard on a local TV station. Sometimes they tell lies and put them in a truthful disguise. But the truth is, that's why we said it wouldn't be televised. They don't know what to say to our young folks, but they know that you do. And if they really knew the truth, why would they tell you? The first sign is peace. Tell all them gun-toting young brothers that the man is glad to see us out there killing one another. We raised too much hell when they were shooting us down, so they started poisoning our mind and trying to jerk us all around. And then they tell us they got to come in and control our situation. They want half of us on dope and the other half in incarceration. If the ones they want dead ain't killed by what they instigated, they can put some dope on the brother's body and claim it was drug-related. Tell them drug related means there don't need to be no investigation, or at least that's the way they're gonna play it on the local TV station. All your nine millimeter brothers, give them something to think about. Tell them you heard that this is the new word. They got to work that stuff out. Because somehow they feel in the wrong way with a gun in their hands. They feel it real independent, but they just pull in contracts with a man. Five is five will tell you it's hopeless out there on the avenue, but if they really knew the truth, why would they tell you? And if they look at you like you're insane and they start calling you scarecrow and say you ain't got no brain or start telling folks that you suddenly gone lame or that white folks have finally co-opted your game or worse yet, implying that you don't really know, that's the same thing they said about us a long time ago. Young rappers, one more suggestion before I get out of your way. But I appreciate the respect you give me and what you got to say. I'm saying protect your community and spread that respect around. Tell brothers and sisters they got to calm that bullshit down. Cause we're terrorizing our old folks and we brought fear into our homes. And they ain't got to hang out with the senior citizens. Just tell them, damn it, leave the old folks alone. And we know who ripping off the neighborhood. Tell them that BS has got to stop them. Tell them you're sorry they can't handle it out there, but they got to take the crime off the block. And if they look at you like they think you're insane or start calling you scarecrow thinking you ain't got no brain or start telling folks that you suddenly gone lame or that white folks have suddenly co-opted your game or worse yet saying that you really don't know, that's the same thing they said about me a long time ago. And if they tell folks that you finally lost your nerve, that's the same thing they said about us when we said Johannesburg. But I think you young folks need to know that things don't go both ways. You can't talk respect on every other song or just every other day. What I'm speaking on now is the raps about the women folks. On one song, she's your African queen, and on the next one, she's a joke. And you ain't said no words that I haven't heard, but that ain't no compliment. It only insults eight people out of ten and questions your intelligence. Four-letter words or four-syllable words won't make you a poet. It will only magnify how shallow you are and let everybody know it. And if they look at you like they think you're insane Or they call you scarecrow thinking you ain't got no brain Or start telling folks that you suddenly gone lame Or that the white folks have finally co-opted your game Or you really don't know They said that about me a long time ago If they finally start telling people that you lost your nerve That's what they said about Johannesburg You ain't insane You have got a brain You haven't gone lame You have got your game Remember, keep the nerve Keep the nerve Keep the nerve Keep the nerve
feeling myself, but I stay in my lane. Yeah. I know you thinking you nice, but you sounding the same. Yeah. He need to switch up the slow, but I know that he ain't. Nah. Shit. Maybe he won't to, and probably can't. Nah. Sure. He talk a lot, but ain't saying a word. No nope. 16, sounding like he be lacing his herbs. <laughs> Where you rock told me time to just focus and spit. Yeah. Quit worrying about the niggas abandoning his shit. Yeah. I drop broken, and they told me quit biting your tongue. Yeah. The way you writing sounded like you forgot where you from. Say you from the hood, but you sound like a minister now. Yeah, I can take it there, but shit, I just like how this sound. I should address some of this drama, but Latin they go. But shit, I can't keep playing with you niggas, I'm getting too old. Yeah. The last words Bone told me I never forget. Yeah, quit playing with this music and do it to death. Shit, I came back. You're now watching the End of the Bench podcast, Build and Destroy, hosted by your man, H. Rap B. Good evening, everybody. This is your man, h Rap coming at you live and direct from Late Rent Loud Music Studios. This is the End of the Bench podcast, Build and Destroy, where I hope to build up the community, destroy our lives and propaganda that surround the community. This evening, we have quite a bit of information to disseminate to you. I, as every week, I have to acknowledge my parents, my ancestors, and these, these are the people who brought me here. I am 50% Paula, 50% Williams. Salute to Dolores and John. Thank you for creating me and everybody attached to them and everybody attached to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As usual, I have three questions. The three questions I ask every week is, what do we want? What do we need? And how do we get it? What do we want? What do we need? And how do we get it? That's what I ask every week. And hopefully I can help us get to those places. We have a very interesting week. As I've stated before, we are in a situation, we are in dire straits. Um, what the lawmakers of this country, well, the wicked lawmakers, I'm not going uh, and I'm not gonna going to encapsulate everybody into this one group. The wicked lawmakers of the land are putting us in a bad situation. First and foremost, if you are watching on YouTube, please hit the thumbs up button, share, tell a friend, tell a friend, subscribe. If you are watching on Facebook, hit that like button. Do the same. And if you are watching on www.theendofthebench.com, thank you and please subscribe. It is going to be one heck of a ride. Thank you again. Now, as I was saying, the title of the show this week is called Dog Whistles. What are dog whistles? Dog whistles are political tools used by political pundits that are diametrically opposed to your uh, success in life. What you do, what a dog whistle is, is, it is saying things that only a few can hear. You, a traditional dog whistle is a, a, a you blow into the whistle. If you're not of a canine persuasion, you will not hear the sound of the whistle. And why I use the term dog whistle today is the people who are diametrically opposed to your uh, uprising, your happiness, your peace, your joy, they use these very same tactics to disarm the general public and alert their base disarm the general public and alert their base you 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 use terms like well one of the synonyms for these these actions is chicago the very city i'm sitting in chicago illinois chicago chicago has become a synonym for violence and when you say violence in america what you traditionally say is black violence black violence is that a synonym in my mind? No, it's not. But the people who are not on our side, they are our mortal enemies. They are trying to oppress us. They are trying to subjugate us. They're trying to put us back into bondage. Chicago, when you say Chicago, people immediately assume violence. When you assume violence in the United States of America, you're going to assume black. And when you assume black, that puts us in a, that puts us in a, us in a precarious situation beginning, middle, and end of it. 
another dog whistle. It's this thing, this term, woke. Woke means and they've turned woke into anti-white, which means which which will you know you can use it as pro-black, anti-white, anything to oppress uh, the white community. That's what woke is. And when you start using these terms and using this type of dialect, you put people on guard, people who are truly ignorant in this country, because willful ignorance is the order of the day. People will 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 openly and clearly prefer to stay ignorant versus learning about the things that will help them be as productive as humanly possible. You have people in this country that I don't like. I love the Affordable Care Act, but I hate Obamacare. I love the Affordable Care Act and I hate Obamacare. They are the exact same things, but when you throw Obama's name on it, it becomes a talking point that is anti-CRT, critical race theory. Critical race theory is a master's level course. It is a master's level elective. If you are not familiar with uh, um, academic higher education jargon, a master's level uh, uh, course is a course that you must, A, graduate from high school to take, and then you must graduate from college, and then you must uh, attempt to obtain your master's degree, and then you have to request the class. So when people say uh, we need to keep CRT out of our school, it is truly, again, speaking out of pure, unadulterated ignorance. So when you have a country who are who who's clearly a lot of the people in the country are clearly working out of an ignorant state of mind, you must use that ignorance and make sure it is encapsulized and not spread like a cancer. That's what I'm trying to do every week. And these dog whistles to help you help give the oppressive power. Another one is woke. And let's just, I'm not even going to get into this whole woke informed and all this thing. I'm not going to get into the definition of it. Let's just go with the raw dog, raw bones definition of woke. Woke means not to be sleep. Who wants to be sleep? You don't want to be sleep doing anything at night at, besides the, at the end of the evening when you are allowing your body to rest and heal itself. That's the only time you want to be sleep. You don't want to be sleep during the middle of the day because you're doing work. You don't want to be sleep in the early morning or the evening. That's when you transitioning to and fro in regards to employment. You don't want to be sleep at a, a, at a, at a children's function. You don't want to be sleep when you wrote your significant other. You don't want to be sleep at any point in your life that is significant. So why is woke a bad word now? Woke is a bad word because they would prefer you, the people in charge of the United States federal government on the evil side of the game, they would prefer that you stay ignorant and sleep. Because if you stay ignorant and sleep, they can continue to attempt to take the states, take your rights, and a whole lot of other things that go along with that and your freedoms and your liberties. First and foremost, let's, let me let me take that back a second. No one can take your rights from you because God gave you those rights. Now, there are laws. And let's just, again, when you think about Amos Wilson, Dr. Amos Wilson, he even said it. How can somebody take something from you that God gave you? And now, at that point, you talk about laws that are being enforced to protect those rights. And then what are laws? Laws are only enforced by the people who will adhere to them. Because if you don't adhere to the laws, then at that point, you have an anarchy and then you have an anarchy, you have chaos, and you have to rebuild a situation. So why are we even paying attention to these things? Because you have people who are using, again, back to the original point, dog whistles. When you hear the term states' rights, each state should have its own rights. This is why CRT is imperative. Because if you, one of the things in CRT, critical race theory, or culturally responsible teaching, one of the things that help you with CRT is this. When you are truly involved in CRT, culturally responsive teaching, you will learn history with no abridged uh, uh, definitions, no, no shortcuts, not the cliff notes. You will learn history point by point. Why, why would the government and why would people in government not want you to know about history? Because when you learn about history, when you learn about what you have done, to quote the great Marcus Garvey, 
what Africans can do, Africans will do. Or what Africans have done, Africans can do. Why is that important? Because when you realize the power that you have inside of you and the greatness that you have inside of you, what happens is you will try to repeat that. When you see that your mother is a great cook, you're going to try to cook. When you see your father's a great mechanic, you're going to try to fix things. If you see that your one of your parents is, is, is equipped to do music and so forth and so on, you will try to repeat those things. Why is it important that we learn history? It's important that we learn history because you don't want to, you want to look back like, like the great African San Sankofa to look back so you can know what's going on and you can see what's going on in the future. So you can avoid those pitfalls. Now, a lot of people say, I don't need to know history. They teach American history. No, they teach white nationalism in the United States of America. Anybody who watching, who anybody who disagrees and say, hey, that's your business. And I understand. Nobody has to agree with me, but I understand what I'm watching. I understand what I've been seeing my entire life. I can just give you a brief overview of what you've learned in your academic institutions like K through eight. Your entire life, you learn. Uh, uh, the Pilgrims came, you learned Christopher Cummins came over here and discovered this. Lie number one. You heard the pilgrims follow him and set up shop and, and made friends with the Indians. And then all of a sudden, people start migrating west. Nobody told you what happened to get that migration, but you just heard they start migrating. You heard about Thanksgiving. You heard about them migrating west. Then after a while, they get to about Pennsylvania and they're like, hey, man, we're sick of the English controlling us. Taxation without representation. Then you hear about this brother named Christopher Zadis getting shot in the midst of their first, he's the first person to die in the midst of their fight. Then you hear about Andrew Jackson, and then you hear about migration west, and then you hear about the population of the South and the Southeast, you know, 13 colonies, and they create a country. They have a war, they create a country, and then that country is created and they continue to move further west. Never hearing about it, how they get in this land, but you just know that that's what happened. And you hear about this guy, George Washington, never telling lies. You hear about Andrew Jackson, but you don't hear about the annihilation of uh, the native people, the indigenous people to North America. You never hear about the annihilation. You never hear about it. But that's American history. We learn American history, right? Then you hear about this guy named Abraham Lincoln. He shows up. Southern states say, hey, man, we want states' rights. Remember I said that a few minutes ago. Dog was states' rights. Now, once you hear about the states' rights, we want our, we want the right to do handle our states the way we want to handle them. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, we're not going to be bothered with you. Abraham Lincoln want, fought a war, won a war, and then black people, he did it to free the black people. No, that's a lie, too. Lie number two. Then you hear about the early 1900s. You know, oh, yeah. Then you hear about the Louisiana Purchase, but you don't hear about our Haitian brothers and sisters who acted a fool and said enough of this in, in the state of Louisiana because at the time, the state of Louisiana was owned by the French. And the Haitians said, we ain't having this anymore. We're going to move to Haiti, and then we're going to kick the French butt. Napoleon lost that fight, had to sell the rest of the country that the French owned, and that's called Louisiana Purchase. And you heard about that, and then you hear about the Great Migration West, the wild, wild west, the da-da-da-da-da. Then you hear about the gold rush, and, and then you hear about the 1900s started, and it was a war. We saved the day. Adolf Hitler showed up again. That's another war. We say today again. And then Dr. King showed up. George Washington Carver got mixed in. Kennedy got shot. Bill Cosby and Althea Gibson show up. And then that's it. That's the 70s come. And then that's when we showed up. And then bam, that's all you know about. That's what you learn in history. You don't hear about all the greatness. You know, occasionally a, 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 a sprinkle in a... a, a uh, 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 the great sister who went back, Harriet Tubman, and you might, and if you listen closely, you hear about Sojourner Truth, but you don't listen, don't, if you better be listening closely, you might hear about George Washington Carver, and then you hear about, uh, uh, that That might be it. That's what you learn in school. There's three ways to learn, there's three things to learn in school. You got the teacher, you got the curriculum, and you got the experience of the teacher, and that's why you need the teachers that we have that are actually caring for the for the young people and if the white nationalists in this country had it their way that's all you would learn white men white men white men couple black people white men made it great make america great again which is uh america first which is a Ku Klux Klan slogan but don't nobody want to talk about that either bam now we are looking at a situation to where as we have a rebirth of burning of books abortion rights being lost now they want to dissemble this dismantle 
uh, uh, child labor laws. They want to get rid of the Department of Education. Do you understand if it wasn't for your ancestors, the people who were in bondage in the United States of America? See, this is what happened. Our people uh, united the country, reestablished the United States of America. We won the Civil War. And I am saying that we, meaning the descendants of African enslaved people and our ancestors and my, my and your ancestors, point blank period, and the sentence allowed me to move forward. What our people knew is knowledge is power. So when you have people like uh, Frederick Douglass taught himself, what's Frederick Douglass teach himself how to do? He called it an emancipation. He called it a, a, a revelation moment in his life when he learned how to read and he said, hey, reading will help me free myself. What did the people who own Frederick Douglass tell his wife? The man said, you can't teach him how to read because if he learned how to read, no person enslaved is worth us. He's not worth being enslaved if he can read because he will empower himself. Him, so join the tooth, learn how to read, and others learn how to read. And guess what? Our people were free. And they started to educate themselves. And when they started to teach each other how to read, America said, yo, hold on, wait a minute. We need white folks start saying, we want to learn how to read too. Because if you look into history, doing what they call the dark ages, only 2% of the people in Europe knew how to read. 2%. Guess why? Because if you keep people ignorant, they won't fight. Because they'll accept status quo when they realize that they have better things to do than sit around and do the bidding of the rich and the wealthy, then they start acting fool. Now, now, back to the point of hand. We are in a situation to where as the white nationalists who are in who are in these seats, remember, voting don't count. That's what y'all told me. That's what I used to tell people. I was wrong. I was wrong. But now that I've educated myself, that's the key. You can be as wrong as you want to be. You can stand on whatever you believe in. But once you get the information to empower yourself, you must change the way you see things. Your way might be right for you at that moment, but it may not be correct. Back to the point. I keep telling people, I've been telling you guys for a year, they are not trying to take it back to the 50s. They're trying to take it back to the 1850s. You disagree? All you have to do is look at Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, for those who don't know, she's the press secretary of Donald J. Trump. And now she's the governor of the great state of Arkansas. Mm. Why? Because only 13 percent of our people showed up. Do you understand that this lady stood in front of the United States government, the United States of America populace and told lie after lie after lie after lie on national television? And she was allowed to be elected to be the governor of the great state of Arkansas because only 13 percent of our community came out. By the way, I think I may be mistaken. I do but think uh, I'm, I'm almost sure that there are more people that look like me and you in the state of Arkansas didn't look like anybody else. But that's neither here nor there. This lady, who's a clearly a prevaricator, that's a very fancy way of say, saying a damn liar. She's clearly a liar, a prevaricator, a stretcher of the truth. Because, see, in legal jargon, you have to tell people, call people what, you know, say a stretcher of the truth because then she can hold me accountable. But she clearly used to prevaricate on national television. And she went up against a honest to God rocket scientist. When I tell you she went up against a rocket scientist, this dude is a legitimate rocket scientist and he's a Christian. So I won't hear this nonsense. Well, well, you know, there's a lot of people believe in God. He might. Oh, sorry. He's a Christian, too. He's a man of God. He's he's insanely intelligent. And he lost to this person because we didn't show up and show out. Why? Again, oh, man, that election stuff don't count. Rap, that stuff don't mean anything. But guess what? Sarah Huckabee Sanders, due to the fact that the meatpacking companies, the meatpacking companies in the United States of America, well, one of the meatpacking companies in the state of Arkansas, sued them for allowing people, un underage people, to work in their factories and get injured. And that don't affect me, rap, because, you know, my family had died, da, 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 right? Okay, cool. But I keep telling you, they do these things in some places, like one of the take places, Texas, one of the take places, Florida, which I'll cover in a second. Arkansas is one of the new places, uh, uh, Arizona and Oklahoma, some of the places that they're laying out these, rolling out these laws. Why ain't nobody looking and they roll it out. And then guess what that does? That set precedence. And when you set, pre when you set precedence, then you can potentially let that cancer infiltrate the entire body of the country. And next thing you know, we are in bondage. Back to the point. This lady, the meat packers, 
were sued for allowing underage people to work. Now, a reasonable person goes, hey, man, that's wrong. In my opinion, a reasonable person goes, that's wrong. Shouldn't have any children working in dangerous environments. It, the way the government traditionally works, these are people who are hired to protect the people. So they'll go, hey, you guys going to have to pay for this. And what you're going to have to do is never do this again. Nope, not Miss Huckabee Sanders. Miss Huckabee Sanders just lowered the age of an, an, an working person to under the age of 10. A nine-year-old person who worked in a meat factory. Imagine if you work in the meat factory at nine years old. You, you, first of all, they say the average human being, the average male, his pituitary gland, his brain isn't developed until he's aged 25 years old. So if you find yourself being unable to focus and they say that uh, the attention span of the average human being in the United States of America due to social media and the way things are developed is about eight seconds. So if an adult is about eight seconds, they mean a child is about three to five seconds. You know, if a child is three to five seconds, what in the heck would a nine-year-old be doing in a meatpacking company besides getting a limb cut off? And now that it's legal to work there, oh, but man, Ralph, sometimes, man, young people have to go to work to help their families. You're, you're right. But again, isn't that the 1930s going back? Because how about educating people, putting people in better situations? How about this thing that most most sensible people and in, in, in government say a living wage? Because if you were paying that child's mother and that child's father a living wage, that child wouldn't have to work. And then if that child doesn't have to work, that child can get adequate education. And it's not academic education. It could be a vocational education. It could be a musician or arts and science education. It could be geared towards that person being a successful human being instead of getting up going to work how many times have we watched movies on television shows and you've heard elders go hey i had to start working at age and i had to drop out the sixth grade because i had to help my family mm. but if, if me and you are paying taxes every day and we're buying these products and we're using this cable and we're doing all these things and these companies are continuing to make dollar upon dollar upon dollar why is it that nine-year-old people need to work and why would any sensible person with children in that house, with grandchildren, nieces, nephews, cousins, and neighbors want a nine-year-old to work in a meatpacking factory or anywhere in for that matter? Look, I understand you must establish a, a, a work ethic in your children to understand it so they can understand that working is the key to success. But a nine-year-old working in the factory is insane because guess what? I can all but guarantee you that there's someone in a meatpacking factory or some form of uh, industrial place that was injured today. UPS, FedEx, anywhere, somebody was injured today. So if an adult is getting injured there, a child may be destroyed or terminated. So do would you really want that on your hands? But seeing how child labor laws are, are no longer important, you will be seeing that spread like wildfire throughout the southern part of the country because that's where it traditionally is people elections have consequences and unless you want another child hurt <clears throat> and if or you want one of your children done, uh, uh, done done this way maybe we need to start getting out and vote because this this is starting to be ridiculous this is starting to be ridiculous. These people have our rights and they are disregarding them. And the reason they're disregarding them is because if you are not showing up to defend the right to do everything that you need to do to be the best human being you can do, and uh, they are, why would they look out for you? Oh, the system don't work, h -Rap. This is some nonsense. Okay, why don't we, for the next three elections, which is in two years, and then two years after that, and then two years after that, why don't we just go out in full force and work as hard as we can to maintain the rights that we have? Look, we have to the end of this decade. Look, if we engage full throttle to the end of this decade, we can change this. And I'm not just saying that to be hyperbolic. We can change everything that we don't like because we can put people in play that will do our bidding. And if we and there is no days off. There are no days off. If there aren't no days off, uh, I'm getting election fatigue. Well, imagine the fatigue that your grandmother and your great grandmother had working in the fields. Imagine the fatigue your great grandparents experienced walking through the streets 
All you have to do is watch the very beginning of a few older movies and you'll see people from our community having to step off the curb or better yet, even though I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to do it because I can't stand to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Go look up the Bill Duke interview from Vlad TV and Bill Duke, a guy that you've seen in the original movie, Car Wash, you've seen him and uh, uh, Minister Saeed, dude, you know you messed up, that dude, that guy. He's doing an interview and he's talking about how on a, on a muddy day, him and his brother walking down the street and a white family walked towards them. They had to step off the curve into the mud, let them walk past and then proceed. Meanwhile, getting their clothes sullied and demoralizing them. You want to go back to that? Then cool. Elections don't count. Otherwise, I think you need to get involved and get into it. This is a constant fight. This is something that we're going to be dealing with as long as we live on the face of this earth. So I think you need to get involved. Otherwise, it's is going to be done to you. Right now, I'm going to show you some medical information that will help you live a better life as we stay here and as we fight. I'll be back. This is your man, h Rap, Building the story. I'll be right back. Seven amazing seeds that lower high blood pressure and unclog arteries. As small as seeds are, they turn out to be solutions to some of the most troublesome diseases out there. One in particular, heart disease. Heart diseases come in different ways. Atherosclerosis, in particular, refers to a buildup of fat in the arteries. This clogs up the arteries and makes it hard for blood to flow through them. Clogged arteries can have severe effects, such as stroke and heart attacks. It can also have a negative impact on your daily life in less obvious ways. For instance, shortness of breath, chest pains, exhaustion, and nausea. You may experience numbness in your arms and feet, weakness, or a cold sensation if it affects the blood vessels in your limbs. According to an RD from the Cleveland Clinic, seeds are good sources of plant-based healthy fats, fiber, and minerals. The healthy fats in these seeds will ultimately control cholesterol levels in the body. In this video, you will find seven seeds that lower high blood pressure and unclog arteries. Don't forget to keep your eyes on number two. It's special. Before we dive in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Also, be sure to stick around to watch the video. Book online, grab the keys, and go. Where to first? Till the end. Number seven, chia seeds. One of the seeds that are in particular too good to be true is the chia seed extra loaded with all the goodies. They contain high amounts of omega-3 fatty acids like alpha-linolenic acid, or ALA, as well as fiber, protein, and antioxidants. According to WebMD, Chia seeds contain quercetin, an antioxidant that can reduce the risk of developing heart disease. They also have a high fiber content that can help to lower blood pressure and reduce your risk of developing heart disease by extension. The small, round, black, or white seeds are easy to eat and can simply be added to your soups, salads, and even smoothies. You can have them raw or soaked in juice or water. Both ways are just as good. Number 6. Flax Seeds Any brown or beige-colored seed is most likely a linseed, or what's popularly known as flax seeds. Flax seeds are equally rich in fiber, high in omega-3 fatty acids, and protein. Healthline states that flax seeds may help to lower blood cholesterol. In a one-month study in people with peripheral artery disease, eating 4 tablespoons, or 30 grams, of milled flax seed per day decreased levels of LDL, or bad cholesterol, by 15%. Furthermore, they contain alpha-linolenic acids that are also known to prevent high levels of cholesterol and antioxidants like lignans that decrease your chances of atherosclerosis. Flax seeds can be eaten with homemade bread or crackers, salads, protein balls, yogurt, and almost any meal you'd be comfortable adding them to. A review on the National Center for Biotechnology Information found that ALA in flax seeds was associated with a decreased risk of heart attacks 
and cardiovascular disease-related mortality. It's a good thing, then, that flax seeds are relatively simple to obtain and incorporate into your diet. Number 5. Pumpkin Seeds Pumpkin seeds are flat, elongated green sources of magnesium and iron, in addition to the antioxidants and fiber contained in these seeds. According to Heart.org, eating unshelled pumpkin seeds increases the already significant fiber content in them. Fiber is associated with a reduced risk of heart disease and obesity. Whole roasted pumpkin seeds in their shells contain about 5.2 grams of fiber per serving, while shelled seeds contain just 1.8 grams. Also, Heart.org emphasizes that pumpkin seeds are rich in magnesium, which can improve your heart health. There's nothing better than a homemade pumpkin seed spread for your bread. Better still, consider whole roasted pumpkin seeds in their shells. Those contain at least 5.2 grams of fiber per serving, which gives the added benefit of increasing fiber in your diet. However, if yogurts, oatmeal, or salads are your favorites, don't be scared to toss a little bit into your diet. Just don't forget to enjoy it. Number 4. Sesame Seeds Sesame seeds contain about 0.15 grams of saturated fat, 4.1 grams of polyunsaturated fat, and 3.9 grams monounsaturated fat per 100 grams. According to Healthline, research indicates that eating more polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fat relative to saturated fat may help lower your cholesterol and reduce heart disease risk. Thus, sesame seeds contain enough polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats to lower your risk of developing heart disease. Sesame is known to be high in selenium, an antioxidant responsible for the reduced risk of chronic diseases in humans. Sesame seeds also contain compounds like lignans and phytosterols, which can further reduce cholesterol levels. Sesame seeds are safe to eat with your salads, tuna, chicken, and noodles. For something extra, try tahini made with hummus. Nevertheless, roasting sesame seeds for a couple of minutes to the diet will only do your body's nutritional content more good than harm. Number 3. Sunflower Seeds Seeds like the sunflower seeds are known to be rich in fiber and antioxidants, but more especially to be rich in healthy fats and vitamin E. According to WebMD, those healthy fats, which include polyunsaturated fat and monounsaturated fat, are good for heart health. Three-fourth cups of sunflower seeds contains 14 grams of fat. WebMD states that studies found that consumption of seeds, including sunflower seeds, was linked to lower rates of cardiovascular disease, high cholesterol, and high blood pressure. According to an RD from the Cleveland Clinic, the antioxidants in these seeds reduce free radicals, which may increase the risk of diabetes. Keep in mind is that sodium is known for increasing the risk of high blood pressure. So, unsalted or slightly salted seeds may be your best choice. Aside from that, they are healthy for crackers, oatmeal, salads, and yogurt, so go ahead and make a delicious snack for yourself. Number 2. Black Cumin Seeds Black cumin seeds are one of the most medically powerful seeds to consume. The seeds are used to address several ailments and conditions from cancer to diabetes and even immune disorders. It can fight infections like bacteria, parasites, fungi, and viruses according to research in the area of high blood pressure. The prestigious seeds when adding to diets can reduce total and LDL cholesterol reducing plaque formation and inflammation, as well as lowering high blood pressures. According to a review on PubMed, cumin seeds can lower the total amount of cholesterol and lower blood pressure. This reduces the formation of plaque, which clogs pores. According to another review on PubMed about the cardiovascular benefits of black cumin, 1 to 3 grams of black cumin seed powder can be consumed orally for up to 12 months. Number 1. Celery Seed it turns out consuming seeds promote health benefits equal to eating fruits and vegetables, or perhaps even more. According to a review on PubMed Central, Eastern medicine has used celery seeds in the treatment of ailments like flu and bronchitis for millennia. Today, the seeds are mostly used as spices, and they contain nutrients such as magnesium, iron, 
phosphorus, calcium, and manganese. Magnesium can potentially reduce blood pressure to an extent. That's very beneficial in preventing heart disease. Celery seeds also contain polyphenols, which studies prove are linked to a reduction in the rate of cancer, heart diseases, and diabetes. Celery powder can be used as a spice for soups or grilled meat, and even as a flavor boost for salads, although pregnant women should stay away from celery seeds. By the way, you should be checking in with a health advisor on what's good for you. This goes for any of the seeds mentioned above. It's an appropriate step to take. And on that note, we wrap up today's video. So, which one of these seeds will you be incorporating into your diet? Let us... Hopefully y'all alone. I'm back. It's your man, HYB, coming at you live and direct. Thank you for tuning in. If you're on Facebook, please hit that thumbs up or like button, heart button, whichever one you want to hit. If you are on YouTube, please hit that thumbs up, like button, share, tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in. This is Build and Destroy, where I attempt to build a community and destroy all the lies and propaganda that come along with being black in America. Now, what I want to do is talk about corporate entities. Corporate entities, we fund them. We fund them and we make sure we make sure their their CEOs get these twenty million dollar bonuses. We make sure they sit around and their private jets. For example, all my brothers and sisters that love the NFL, the National Football League, Roger Goodell will retire in a couple of years. Part of his retirement package is a private jet and forty million. He makes forty million dollars a year. Roger Goodell has never tackled anybody on the football field, has never thrown a football, has never blocked, has never run, and he makes $40 million a year. That is a corporate entity that we need to pay attention to and make sure they are not working towards our demise. Even though most of the owners uh, uh, vote and, and diametrically opposed to what we need and what we are going to uh, 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 uh use to be beneficial like when we pay for those football stadiums they use tax they get tax deferments and tax dollars to build stadiums that will only benefit them back to the topic at hand this is why we need to pay attention walgreens shout out to the people at walgreens y'all y'all never let y'all never seen to let us down walgreens had this policy back in 2016 it, it was attacked part of the policy is in the event that a pharmacist or employee at Walgreens deems what you're purchasing a violation of their legal standing, I mean, uh, excuse me, their religious standing, they can refuse to sell it to you. And it, uh, the, the code is that the compromise was they have to go get somebody else in management or another employee to sell it to you because they they can't do it and they don't want to violate their re religious beliefs. Your religious beliefs have absolutely nothing to do with mine and mine shouldn't have anything to do with yours. But now Walgreens, due to public pressure by the Republican Party, because you know when the Republican Party don't agree with something, what they do is take you to court. And when they take you to court, they publicly excoriate you. And guess what? More than likely, the people get what they want. And this is why we must organize. This is why we must galvanize. And this is why we must move forward so we can get what we want back to the point. They've made it a violation of company policy to sell birth control in over 20 states in the United States of America. If you're not if you're unfamiliar with how many states are in the United States of America, it's 50 states in the United States of America. And if 20 of them, you can't get birth control in, that means you may possibly be living in one of those states for one and two. That's almost half. Half the states that you don't you may not get the treatment. Look, I understand some people may not believe in birth control. That's your own personal business. As I say every week, if you don't believe in something, don't do it. I don't believe it. I don't, I'm not a guy who participates in our, our LBGTQ practices. But guess what? That means I won't be kissing a man. That's all it means. I have nothing to do with what you do. I'm not going to be kissing a man. That's all I have to do. If I'm against something, all I have to do is not. Do, I don't smoke cigarettes. Guess what? I've never purchased a pack of cigarettes. Period. I just made an agreement that from other things in my life, I made some changes. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to stop you from doing it. But that, that has nothing to do with me. Some women use birth control not to just fight off the potential unwanted pregnancy. They use it to regulate their uh, menstrual cycle. And if you're doing it that way, then bam, you will now have to be subject to Walgreens or we need to pay attention to these corporate entities and move away from them in, in, in its entirety. We have CVS and there's some communities still in the United States of America that have their own personal pharmacists. Maybe we need to move our business over there. 
because if you've taken on the um the the, the point of view of people who are diametrically opposed to me or if you're taking on the point of view of people who are with their uh <clears throat> the goal their goal in life is to oppress people that look like me maybe i need to not give you another dime maybe we need to focus on cvs cvs is a national chain as well maybe we need to make them equally powerful we can't go to walmart because for whatever reason these companies with the w's have a lot of issues walmart is anti-union which means they're not they don't have to pay people uh, at, at, a, at, a, at a reasonable wage and wells fargo we've seen they've paid fines for pers- personally tar- uh, specifically targeting people from our community and their housing crisis. A lot of our people went homeless, even though they had provisions set up. Wells Fargo's wouldn't allow them to get those provisions to deal with us. And here we are, Walgreens. They don't want people from impoverished or underserved communities to get the medication in the, that they need in the event that they don't meet the standards of my religious beliefs. All that means is, guess what? Just not yet. Yeah, you be judged. And if God told you, don't worry about it, let him handle it. Why don't you follow the rules of your religion and stay out of my, me and God business and keep in line with you and God's business? But you got these corporate entities. Thank you to uh, Governor of California, Galvin Newsom. More than likely, he'll be your next president. I hope if we lucky, he'll be your next president because uh, Sleepy Joe is time to go. But yeah, another conversation. But if you didn't have people like Galvin Newsom stepping up, these are the kinds of things that you have to pay attention to, A, this show and other news entities, so you can be kept abreast of what's going on. Your rights are being stripped from you on a daily basis. Every single solitary day, there is there are over 80 bills in the state of Mississippi alone to strip states' rights from people, not to count not to even take it, take into account the three women that are suing the state of Texas because they had they were attempting to get medical abortions because their lives were being put in danger and doctors almost didn't get them those things and some of those women have been permanently damaged physically because they needed abortions and doctors dragged their feet is it the doctor fault you can blame the, the physician you can but do you really want that doctor to put his livelihood in in, 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 uh, in jeopardy because you need something to do? Even though he took this hypocritic oath that said he's supposed to protect you, but hand, it's, eight, it's six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. You really don't want someone to lose their livelihood, and they shouldn't have to deal with those kinds of things. Again, for the people that consistently tell you, that, hey, man, I don't participate in the system, da 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 da, da. I'll just sue. Ah, if you sue, I hope you don't go to an entity that has HB 1020 on the books. What is HB 1020H rap? That HB 1020 is apartheid being revisited in the United States of America. Apartheid being revisited. Well, actually being instituted in the United States of America. Apartheid is is a set of laws that was set up in South Africa. And they're taking the same principles from South Africa and moving them right into Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi is the largest populated county. Uh, uh, I think, uh, I can't think of the name of the county, but it doesn't make a difference. 80% of the people in Jackson, Mississippi, the county in Jackson, Jackson, Mississippi sits in are African-American. 80% of the people that sit there are african-american now they're trying to institute an additional judicial system run by the people who live outside of jackson mississippi who lives outside of jackson mississippi it ain't us it is not us actually it might be us but the people who are trying to do this are white folks i'm gonna say it it is what it is hate me if you want to you'll get over it or die trying now this is what i want you to understand The people of Jackson, Mississippi have elected judges. They elected a brother who's a mayor. They've elected people who are looking out for them. Now, the people at the state house who just happen to be in Jackson, Mississippi as well, they are fighting against everything this this mayor is doing. He's a black man. He's doing everything he can to get these things taken care of. Now, how is it that the people outside of Jackson, Mississippi want to institute a judicial system that will undercur 
the current system. Guess what that means? They're going to implant judges that when you want to take these people to court, what they're going to do, they're going to take those people to court. And let's say the water people, the people who control that water. Now, they want to control the water. They want to control the education and they want to control the police, the, the police system. Now, somebody beats you to sleep as a police officer just gets out of their car and they decide they want to beat you to sleep. You don't go to the judges that you've elected to enforce the laws that protect you. What you do is you go to this additional judicial system, just like they used to do in South Africa. And if those the judicial, the, the, the judicial system is run by uh, our, our Caucasian friends or enemies, they are going to let those people walk. It's on the books already. They, are, they have legislation. I think that they're going to vote on this on April 5th. If you want to sue the water company for giving you substandard water, if you want to do substandard water, you can't sue the state of Mississippi anymore. You have to go through the judicial system that will already be controlled by these people who don't want to give you your rights. How about this? The mayor of Jackson, Mississippi circumvented the governor of Jackson, Mississippi, who's a staunch white nationalist, if you ask me. That's my personal opinion. I have the right to have a opinion. I have a legal right to have an opinion about anybody in the United States of America. That doesn't make it true. That just makes it my opinion. Back to my point. The brother who's running, Brother Mamumba, who's running the uh, uh, the state, he circumvented the state of Mississippi, went straight to the feds, and got $850 million to repair the water system in Jackson, Mississippi. And now, those people who want to add that additional additional judicial system they want to undercut him and take 450 million of the money that they refuse to take now you got this president in play to give the state of mississippi through the brother mamunda 850 million dollars and y'all wasn't gonna help him get the 850 million dollars but now that he has 850 million dollars you want to take 425 million of that we must realize what this what has happened this is why i continue to ask people to download this app the five cause app because guess what if you, this is why you hit things like states' rights. Because if you have states' rights, you can control things like this and you can subjugate black people throughout the United States of America. But if we, as the thing currently stands, you can have federal rights. And if you download the Five Calls app, you can call your senator, you can call your state representative, you can call your, uh, 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 um, the people who are in charge of your state and you let them know that things that happen in Jackson, Mississippi, because I got family. Because if you live in Chicago, there's a great chance that you have somebody in Mississippi related to you. Hey, the West Side and South Side of Chicago are littered with people from Chicago, uh, from Mississippi. So I'm, I'm assuming that most people who are going to pay attention to this, you guys have family that are there as well. Now, we need to get this thing taken care of. We need to get involved and get into it. Because if you don't have any direct descendants, you don't have any direct relatives, you got some descendants there that you probably don't know about. I know for a fact my great-grandmother's from Jackson, Mississippi. Esther Cotton was from Jackson, Mississippi, and she died. Esther Whitmore married to my great-grandfather. So I got my homeboy, Steve. I got family everywhere. I got family down there. So this is going to affect them. So if you're willing to allow these white nationalists to take over the situation and you think it's cute and sexy and, and you're going to boycott this and you don't care about this and you don't care about that. Oh, that's cool. Understand that this will affect you soon. Cut Because just like I told you, I told you they want to reenact the Fugitive Slave Act 365 days ago, 52 weeks ago, and they have done it. Now they just call it bounty. If you know of someone who's going to get an abortion in the state of Texas, the Uber driver can be sued. He It's a bounty on his head for $10,000. So if, if the Uber driver knows that he's taking you to someplace where you can go get an abortion, he don't report it. He, that is the Fugitive Slave Act all over again. They just calling it for abortion at this point. Folks, continue to stand on the sideline and you too will be affected by this. When you are looking at when you are looking at these situations unfold, you will see this thing blow up in your face soon. It, ha- it it went from Texas, it went to Arizona, it went up to Oklahoma, it went to Missouri, it's going to Florida, it's going to show up in Michigan, so forth and so on. This thing will not stop here. It will be kicking you and your behind soon. Bill HD 1020 is on its way to your front door. Understand that. Understand that. Download the Five Calls app and put in a phone call. 
all you have to do is say, hey, I am Brian Williams. I am a registered voter in the state of Illinois. I don't like what's going on in the state of Mississippi. You need to do something if you want to keep your job, period. It ends it. There was a petition, but the petition ended last week. I need people to stop participating or you roll with this or you will be suffering the consequences of this. Now, with that being said, I want to show you your greatness. Like I told you every week, we're going to do health and wellness. I'm going to show you some history to show you how great you can be, the greatness that lives inside of you. This is your man, h Rap. I'll be back in a second to close out the get down. The performance of African women as rulers, queen mothers, and royal women is undoubtedly impressive. This history cannot be dismissed due to its frequency in regards to the entire African continental scope. However, when we look at African history in a piecemeal process, the picture seems a bit different. African rulers such as Queen Monarinus, Queen Nzinga, and Hatshepsut are a rare occurrence. The foundation of African statehood was male-oriented, nearly in totality. The occasional queen or queen mother found in Africa cannot account for the collective experience of African women in ancient and medieval times. Before we address the social, political, and economic status of the average woman on the continent, it's important to yet again highlight the diversity of African culture. African people advance patrilineal and matrilineal structures. Gender roles and power relations will sometimes be very different depending on the region, and so we must be able to differentiate and delineate the cultural dynamics as effectively as we can. That being said, this video primarily focuses on the patterns seen in West Africa. However, other regions such as Southeastern Africa and Northeastern Africa will be mentioned as well. An unassailable reality for most women in Africa is that their rights and socio-political power was related to male proximity. Single women and widows were limited in their acquisition of power and had considerably more insecurities than married women or women related to powerful men. In Buganda, for example, titled wives of the king could collect taxes from certain subordinate rulers on behalf of the state. The average Buganda man had to be keenly aware of the status of any given Buganda woman, as she may have proximity to male power. Thus, proximity to male power or other relationships produce opportunities for women to express varying levels of agency. Despite the ubiquitous nature of this cultural phenomenon in many parts of the African continent, the average married woman in ancient Egypt seems to have had a quite different experience. In general, the average woman in ancient Egypt had the right to inherit, own, and control property. But the impressive aspect of this African civilization is the complete autonomy of married women in ancient Egypt. Till now, we had placed no faith in the humorous picture drawn by Herodotus when he averred that in the Egypt of his day, the women did all the trading and marketing while the men sat at home at the loom. Still less did we believe Diodorus Siculus when he stated that Egyptian husbands promised in their marriage contracts to submit themselves in all things to the power of their wives. We took these for ancient travelers' tales, but our demotic papyri show that Herodotus and Diodorus wrote in sober earnest of very sober fact. Nothing is more common among these masses of demotic contracts than to find married women buying and selling lands and houses, lending money on usurious terms, foreclosing mortgages, and even tendering contracts to the state without the smallest reference to their husbands. This level of freedom was not as popular in other parts of Africa. For example, among the married Ieti women of Nigeria, husbands could not deny their wives land, but he had other, though limited, methods of ensuring she doesn't acquire prime real estate. However, we do see some parallels between ancient Egyptian women and the Ieti women of Nigeria. Trading and marketing was an important activity for the Ieti women, as it was in ancient Egypt. Women organized themselves in age groups and contributed in a significant way to the local economy. As was the case with Ga women of Ghana, local marketing activities in pre-colonial Ieti 
and generally amongst Isoko people were dominated by women. Women played a significant role in farming activities since ancient times. According to one scholar, farming was the most important occupation in pre-colonial Yeti society. Christopher Errett highlights a crucial development in understanding the average woman's role in African civilization. The agricultural revolution is considered by many to be one of the most important periods in human history. Many scholars agree that it helped humans to settle in one area and was the origin of human civilization as we know it. The average Niger-Congo women throughout West and Central Africa, according to Christopher Errett, was instrumental in that process. Okra was still another quite early crop of Niger-Congo farmers, while the kola nut, a tree crop of the West African rainforest, became important later in the last 3,000 years BCE. The inventors of this agriculture, by the way, were women, who in pre-agricultural eras had borne the chief responsibility for the collecting of wild yams and other wild plant foods. Ancient Egyptian women, according to a Greek observer, were traders and marketers while the men sat at home at the loom. Interestingly enough, one European observed a similar dynamic amongst the Yeti women of Nigeria. On the whole, the women seemed to be far more industrious than the men, for whereas the men always contrived to have leisure hours and off days from work, the women seemed to have none. In their best form, the average married woman seems to have been economically astute, contributing in significant ways to the maintenance of civilization. In fact, in many West African societies, women producers and traders were not subordinate to men. Also, non-royal married women could wield political power as well. The average woman organized themselves in councils, a cultural aspect found throughout the African continent. In these age groups or councils, the woman would appoint a spokesperson or head, and she would deliver the needs and concerns to an African council. Women were in full control of their own associations and institutions and had a voice in public affairs. They had trade and craft guilds, and they spoke on matters of taxation and maintenance of public facilities, such as markets, roads, wells, and streams. These woman-controlled councils would inflict sanctions on men if they felt strongly on a matter. They exercised this power in various ways. The Ieti women, in particular, would take a man hostage or literally lay a non-violent siege on a man's house. Also, they could decide not to cook for their husbands in collective efforts. These expressions of power certainly got the attention of the male elites. One scholar states, that the Yeti's pre-state political organization was comparable to the dual-sex political systems identified by Okonjo and Amadume among the Igbo of Nigeria. Although our focus was the average woman of West Africa, many women across the continent experienced a similar dynamic. However, we can't neglect the nuances and the fact that African culture is not a monolith. Male and female relations weren't perfect but assuming women had no agency in ancient or medieval Africa would be a fundamental mistake. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in this continued development, consider supporting the home team on patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. <laughs>
I could, my mother couldn't get a bank account. They want to tell you the women are inferior, that we're superior, that they are, our, they are, our, they are a subspecies. When you disrespect your mother, your sister, your your aunts, your aunt, your aunts, your aunts, your nieces, nephews, your nieces and cousins, you're disrespecting your heritage. Do not adopt this westernized European way of thinking. I'm the man. I'm in control of everything because you are not and have not always been that way. Even if you watch something as fictitious as Wakanda uh, uh, with Black Panther, you notice that the queen mothers elected the king. The queen mothers elected the king. The man may be in charge, but you cannot do this without this without the proper woman on your team. Back to the, this is the final point of the day. Look, as I told you at the top of the show, these bills like HB 1020 are trying to reinstall, well, install apartheid within the United States of America. They're doing a damn good job at attempting it. The next bill, it is HB, and these HB just stands for House Bill, House of Representative Bill. House Bill 999. If you invert 999, what do you get? 666. I don't want to go into it because I just found out that 666 thing might not be what we thought it was. But we're not. We're going to go with the traditional thinking of it. Now, House Bill 999 is designed to do away with in the state of Florida, your man Ron DeSantis again. Big ups to the people who voted for Ron DeSantis, the people of color, whether you black, whether you're Latino, whether you're Asian, or what have you. Shout out to y'all, because y'all had an opportunity to get rid of him. Y'all chose him, and this is what he has on the board. Last week, he tried to circumvent the 15th Amendment, which give you gives you the ability to have equal rights and equal, equal opportunities throughout the United States of America, so it was shot down. All that was was posturing. But House Bill 999 is something totally different. This is to do away with any entity that that speaks upon on college, on academic institutions or college campuses or high school campuses or wherever you are learning institutions of higher learning to do away with anything that has anything to do with diversity, inclusion and and, and diversity and, and, and inclusion. What does that mean? Oh, man, you tripping H rap or man, they don't have nothing to do with us. Uh, it has everything to do with us. It's stage one on getting rid of HBCUs because HBCUs, while they are not 100% black populated, because if all you do is go to Howard, go to Howard.com, HowardUniversity.com, pull up their, uh, pull up their uh, uh, baseball team. See more white people than you ever seen in your life. But, now, yeah, look like a major league baseball team. But, besides that point, HBCUs about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then they don't even want you to talk about this gender thing. So they're attacking the LBGTQ with this. They're attacking uh, uh, also, guess what? HBCUs could be potentially, that's the beginning of closing those down. Why were HBCUs created? Because y'all didn't want us there. Y'all seen the picture of the young lady in Arkansas? They had to have a National Guard walk out in the school. By the way, she's still alive. So just in case you think, oh, that was a long time ago, she's still alive. So it wasn't that long ago. A lot of people, when you watch when you watch television, you watch documentaries, and watch movies, you see that these things were not long ago. These your, these your parents and your grandparents had to go through integration, get things thrown at them, and have to have national guards and police to walk them inside of their schools. So you created an entity because you ain't want me at your school. None of my schools are starting to thrive, and, and my people starting to migrate back to those institutions. You want to shut down those institutions. That's one. He also wants to set, shut down any entity that's talking about the upliftment of diverse, uh, diversity, inclusion, and gender. Mm. So if you want to uplift women and not have them subjugated to the uh, cisgender white male, no, nah, we won't. We, you can't be on the campus talking about that. Uh, the Divine Nine, you know, all those programs y'all have, school programs, uplifting programs, education programs. We're going to get rid of those because that is diverse, di- uh, diversity bringing in everybody, inclusion, bringing in everybody, and cisgender and non-cisgender. And guess what? We don't want that anyway. So if you are a Kappa, an Alpha, a Sigma, a Delta, or AKA, they don't want you on campus in the state of Florida. 
Well, Ron DeSantis don't, but y'all voted for him, so deal with it. But we can't deal. We can't just deal with it. You know why? Because Ron DeSantis is in cahoots with that goofball Abbott, who's in cahoots with these other goof with the goofball in Arizona and the goofball in uh, 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 Arkansas. So it'll just spread like cancer and choke you out, folks. I'm here to tell you. We can sit back and say, I can't do anything, but I'm going to appeal to your spiritual sense. Most people watching this are Christians. Most people watching this believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Jesus Christ started our religion with 12 people and look at it now. So if Jesus not likening you to Jesus, you are not Jesus. But if Jesus can start a move with 12 people, so can you. You can start you and your significant other and then your, their cousins and your cousins can galvanize and start moving forward. Start saying, I can't do anything and do something. Because guess what? About 170 years ago, it was a group of people saying, I got to get about these chains. And they got about these chains. And then shortly thereafter, they said, we need to be educated. They went from 2% of the population being literate to four years later, 96% of the population was being literate. You went from being in bondage to Wilmington, North Carolina, to Liberty City, Florida, and I've named these cities countless times. Look, if you don't think you're going to make it, you're scared to get a, get a dog. But you need to get involved, get up off your behind, and get something done. The easiest thing you can do is download this five calls app, complain to your state senator, complain to your U.S. senator, complain to your state representative that the people in Mississippi and the people of Florida have lost their entire mind. I have somebody write up something to fight it against you because if it passed there, it's coming your way. Don't believe it. This is why history is important. People that don't believe what I'm saying, ask the people who were in Nazi Germany about uh, about 80 years ago. How did that work for them? With that being said, Shaman H. Rob B., I just want to make sure every Tuesday you sit, you you uh, clear a little time for me around 6 p.m. Sit your standard time. Get in front of your computer, your laptop, and sit your ass down! Sit your ass down! And I'll, I'll, we, we need to work together and make sure all the people that are against us... You better shut your white mouth. I'm not kidding you. And I'm here to let you know that I'm here to fight, you here to fight, and we here to fight. If all of us do a little bit, nobody has to do a lot. Salute to Sway Calloway, the Ghetto Boys, Tariq Nasheed, Nori, Talib Kweli, Ray Grady, Zoe Williams, Corey Hogan, Craig Smith, Al Sharp, the Heather B, Clay Kane, Laurie Daniel Favors, my personal favorite, Dr. Greg Carr, Karen Hunter, the Queen Mother, and the Dean of this whole thing, the Black Eagle. Joe Madison, I see y'all in 167 hours. It's time for Bible study. It's your man H. Rap. I'm here to help. I hope you're here to help. Let's do it together. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? We lust for that cheese, we lose sleep, dreams of that cream, we killing our teams, they dying for this American dream, them government schemes, they turning us to hustlers and fiends, we hustling trees, them politicians smuggling green, chasing that cheese, got everybody stressed in the streets, bottom me for speaking freely, let it breathe. Evangelists preach to congregations out of their seats. They writing them checks for tithes. Now as people can't eat, she stripping for change for school. Now she giving a brain. She used to that loot, she earning. Now she giving them strain. He new to this game, but hungry, so he clicking his cane. He getting that paper, but then they gave him tools to the brain. It's rules to this game, but hustlers never hustle for fame. The spirit of greed is grimy, so we struggle to change. They put us in chains to take away our African names. But if we submissive and don't resist, then who do we blame? It's all a game, man. It's European stake and they claim that you. A victim of the game plan. You thinking they ain't? You thinking they saints? Remember all them niggas they hang? Killed our women and our children, all our leaders are slain. They gave us Obama, but that nigga was hoping for change. But Zimmerman is killing niggas, and he free.
Curry. Shit is crazy. Babies having these babies and getting checked. But keep the child from they pop the rip his heart out his chest. Our rappers was leaders and now they in the booth and the dress. Spitting bullshit and making more but giving us less. They taking our sound and changing hours. Dumbing it down. They taking our jobs and homes and they shutting us out. They taking our kids because it ain't a man in the house. They locking us down but soon they gonna be wiping us out. They told our women they was too independent to need a man. They told our brother he was too insignificant to advance. It's all a game man. It's European staking they claim. And you a victim of their game plan. You thinking they ain't. You thinking they saints. Remember all them niggas they hang. Killed our women and our children. All our leaders is slain. It's all a game. Game, 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 game.